Good evening. I know I'm between you and T, so I'll be really quick and I'll try to not give you gyan, but just tell you some stories. So I am a conservation architect. I'm based in Delhi and I work uh, with urban conservation. Now, why I call this experiments in urban conservation? Because a lot of these things just happened to happen. Can I have the next slide, please? So um, the first project was actually uh, started my conservation practice about uh, seven years ago, is um, uh, a common man's house, a haveli in Old Delhi. Now, we've uh, heard a lot, of, read a lot of research about how regeneration of historic housing is uh, the key uh, strategy towards, re uh, towards urban regeneration. Now, I'm just, go next. Uh, I'm just going to talk about this little haveli in Shah Jahanabad. Now, Shah Jahanabad, like all other uh, living cities, is a... Uh, it has a lot of things. It has people, it has crafts, it has uh, full activity, and it has a, a high density. We also have lots of issues. We have issues of high real estate development, encroachment, structural issues, building wanting to fall down. So how does in, uh, one even think about conservation in a context like that? Next. So uh, the point in question is a little haveli, which is um, uh, in Kashmiri Gate, just behind the Old Delhi Railway Station. And uh, this actually project happened uh, by chance. Uh, and it next. So it happened because uh, there was a gentleman who came to me and he said that he owns this really old house in the old city. And he said, I have three children, I have a house, I have a house, I have a house, I I said, Haan, kyun kar sakte hai? So I went to see the property. And it was in shambles. It had had no repairs for 50 years. And I said, But this uh, is your property listed. Hai? He said, Listed? What is it? I said, Your property is heritage. Hai? He says, What is it? I don't know. I have a house. You can do it. So when I started looking, I realized that just that year, the year was 2010. Uh, the Delhi government had passed a law which uh, listed about uh, 920 properties as heritage buildings, which meant that even if he wanted, he could not sell it to a builder and that he had no choice but to conserve his property. Next. So the point was, uh, you can look that the building was in a really bad condition. We had an entire, we had, it had had no repairs. So the ceiling was falling, there was a crazy amount of damp. And mind you, people were still living in the building. So these, these people owned the building. They had a few of the rooms were locked, but they continued to live in this building. So they said, Ki, ab aap kya kar sakte? So next. So I realized that conservation was, uh, they were not going to understand the point of conservation. They were not going to understand heritage. They were not going to understand any of the jargon. So I said to them, Look, we will restore your He says, what is that? I said, we will do it like this, that when your girls come here, they will think that you will not have a lot of food, because your girls will be full of food. And they said, yes, this idea is very good. So we started with that premise. And over seven years, uh, we also did it in a very technical way. So when we started the this is the family. These are the people who have just recently got married. So seven years of work has actually come fruitful. So the point of the project was, it is about the family. It's about ordinary people. It's about ordinary houses. And how houses can actually contribute to urban regeneration bit by bit. If every person अपने घर को ठीक से रखेगा, अपने घर को रिस्टोर करेगा, तो हमारा लार्जर अर्बन जिसकी जेनरेशन अपने आप होगा। Next, but the point is हम कंजर्वेशन में बहुत सारी बातें करते हैं, तो हम क्या कंजर्व करना चाहते हैं? क्या हम हर एक ईट, हर एक प्लास्टर, हर एक ब्रोकन, everything, do we want to conserve that or do we want to conserve the spirit of the place? Next, तो in this haveli, uh, when we were doing the restoration, we found, uh, as I showed you, uh, the, we found some. Can we go two slides back? We found a lot of things. Uh, we found remains of a Mughal fountain in their courtyard. We found some old artifacts buried in the courtyard. We found old uh, Mughal walls. So I was very excited as an architect. I said, let's show this. Let's, let's put glass. Let the world come and see that you have a Mughal fountain in your courtyard. And he says, no, this is not what I want to So what we did, as good practice, we documented it, we photographed it, and filled it, filled it back because they needed the courtyard more than the archaeology. Uh, the other thing that happened was a lot of uh, sort of conservation strategies came about by the way they wanted to use their house because at the end of the day, unka ghar tha. So they said, uh, so things like vastu actually determined how the spaces were going to be used. Uh, uh, things, the colors that we would use, they insisted 
uh, on a lot of other things, the orientation of the beds, the colors of the rooms. So we, there was a lot of next, there was a lot of negotiation that actually happened between the artisans. Um, so we had, we started with a contractor uh, trying to, you know, uh, do conservation the right way. Halfway through the project, the contractor ran away, and the owner said, "Main kara lunga." Mujhe kya zarurat hai contractor ki artisan se main kaam kara lunga. And I think that was one of the most important things that happened because it taught me one lesson. It conservation is common sense. Sabko conservation pehle se hi aati hai. You just as an architect, I think I just had to handhold them to say ki ye is tarah se kariye, and they managed to do a brilliant job. Up next, uh, so first thing was ki hume line se restore karna hai. To hum line kaha se laenge? In uh, old Delhi, we don't have we don't have any space. The only space we had was their angan. So we fit in a jugad lime chakki, and this homemade lime mortar was used to actually restore their entire house. Next, uh, there were some old tiles that we found, which we got replicated in Khurja locally. So ye Italian tiles thi, ye chuna mal ki haveli, ye sabse badi haveli Delhi mein, jisme sab kuch imported tha. Wahan se aayi thi. It was the same period as our haveli. So we copied their design, copy kiya. we went to a person in Khurja, I said, you will make it, he said, yes, we will So the same tiles are now on the courtyard of this Haveli. Uh, next, this is what the condition of the house was. Next, and this is now a fully functional kitchen. We have all the modular equipment in. There is not a shred of cement that has been used in building this. This is made of all the homemade lime mortar from the chakki I showed you. Uh, it has got all the, so the point I'm trying to make is, पुराने घर में भी आपको सारी फैसिलिटीज मिल सकती हैं आपको घर बेच के कहीं सबब में जाने की जरूरत नहीं है एंड दिस वाज द लॉजिक नेक्स्ट दिस वाज द लॉजिक दैट आई गेव द पर्सन कि आप ये घर बेच के जाएंगे सबब में दिस इज हाउ द ड्राइंग रूम वाज बिफोर नेक्स्ट एंड दिस इज व्हाट इट इज नाउ आई सेड ये आपका घर 50 लाख रुपए डाल के महल बन जाएगा बट 50 लाख में आपको गाजियाबाद में भी कोई फ्लैट नहीं देगा आई थिंक इट वाज द फैक्ट दैट वी कुड एक्चुअली स्पीक देयर लैंग्वेज एंड ट्राई टू मेक देम अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट वाज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर देम उनके लिए आज ये महल है आज उनके सारे रिश्तेदारों के बीच में वो एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट पर्सन बन गए हैं बहुत सारे इट्स गॉट दिस हवेली प्रोजेक्ट became uh, you will not believe it is the first project in old delhi that has actually gotten off the ground it is the first project that has shown uh, a way for many other haveli owners in old city it's been covered extensively by the indian and international media so the point i'm trying to make is ek aam aadmi bhi bahut farak la sakta hai the point is ki agar koi aapko sahi batane ke liye aapke haath pakadne ke liye ho to aap bahut kuch kar sakte hai aapko bahut sare paise ki zarurat nahi hai sirf ek sahi intent की जरूरत है और आप बहुत कुछ कर सकते हैं नेक्स्ट तो हमने क्या किया अब हमने बहुत सारा ज्ञान तो साथ साथ में बटोर लिया था सो वी ओपन द डोर्स ऑफ द हवेली टू स्टूडेंट्स वी सेड वी डेंट नो वेयर टू गेट लाइम मोटर फ्रॉम बट वी कैन टेल स्टूडेंट्स हाउ टू डू इट सो वी हैड हैंड्स ऑन लाइम वर्कशॉप नेक्स्ट पीपल केम दे लर्न दे सॉ एंड वी नेक्स्ट and i put everything on the public domain on a blog it's called the haveli project blog so that any person who is interested in restoring a heritage home can go to the blog everything is on out there the recipe of the lime what we did everything is documented photographs by photographs so that it becomes a example for anybody else to follow my philosophy is ki ek kar sakta hai to 100 kar sakte hai 100 kar sakte hai to movement apne aap banta hai next the second point i'd i'd like to say is ये तो हो गया रेस्टोरेशन बिकॉज इट वॉज लिस्टेड अगर सही बोलूँ तो अगर लिस्टेड नहीं होता तो वो नहीं करते बट आई हैव टू कॉन्स्टेंटली गिव दम डंडा कि गवर्नमेंट आ जाएगी आपको पनिश कर देगी आपको फाइन लगा देगी रिस्टोर तो आपको करना ही पड़ेगा बट द सेकेंड प्रोजेक्ट आई वॉन्ट टू टॉक अबाउट नाउ इज रेस्टोरेशन दैट हैपन आउट ऑफ द लव फॉर हेरिटेज नेक्स्ट दिस इज द डून स्कूल आई थिंक वन पॉइंट आई लाइक टू मेक यर इस जब पैसा नहीं होता ना तो हेरिटेज बच जाता है जब पैसा आता है तो बहुत it's very dangerous because if you don't use the money wisely a lot of wrong things can happen now the doon school is a really really rich school so what happened next over the years is sabne bahut kuch kiya there were donations they built step classrooms they put in they put in whatever they felt like because they had the money now all of that backfired in a way the building was in structural distress you can see the kind of cracks there were there because of additional loading put due to these stepped classrooms next so we were brought in in 2014 and i think i really love this project i call it my textbook project because 
they listened to everything I had to say. So I said, we need to do it this way. So first we documented, then we did condition mapping, then we did investigations, next. And then we had a collaborative decision-making process with the school, with the teachers, with, uh, with the community, with, we had a professional PMC, next. And all these, pro and the projects were done in a timely frame. We had to work from holiday to holiday. And now the building has been restored. We won a UNESCO uh, Asia Pacific Award for it last year, next. And what we also did is we experimented. So this is a smart classroom that was put into the Dune School, which looked at how do you marry heritage and technology. Just because it's an old school, uh, the, the school said we don't need the step classroom because we are not teaching the way when it was designed, you had the headmasters and the masters wearing the robes and coming or wo niche se padate the ab unka curriculum change ho gaya they have all moved to ib ib mein group mein padhana hota hai so the stepped classrooms doesn't help so we had to do an entire redesign keeping in mind that this classroom was at dune it had to have the look and feel of dune yet it had to be modern it had to be contemporary it had to have all the technology that a student at dune needs so it's been an experimentative project and it's been democratic because we two classrooms in 2015. For an entire year, it was tested. The students gave feedback. And just now, we've finished 12 more. And all of these classrooms have been done by donations from the alumni. That's why I'm saying sometimes it's the love for the heritage and the love for the identity of the DOSCOs that made them contribute the money to have these classrooms redone. Next. The third project I want to talk about is Another interesting project, which is work, how to work within existing government systems. Either we can, uh, there was a question in the morning, they said, ki, but government projects mein to aisa nahi hota hai, but I'd like to show you government project mein hum kya kar sakte hai. Next. So this is the IIT Rurki, which was actually the Thomson Engineering College and the Rurki College of Engineering. L unlisted building, 165 years of history, first engineering institute in Northern India. Uh, next. So it was like this, like any other government institution, IIT Bana 2001, mein, baut sara paisa aya, baut sara renovation hua. Uh, so the, we, we only restored a part of the building, which was the director's office, and where we found under the vitrified tiles, uh, these historic tiles, and there were false ceilings, and the arches were concealed. There was permanent uh, uh, RCC and uh, false ceilings being put in next. So all we did was take the layers out. Dheere dheere floor ceiling hatai, arches ko khola, purani fireplaces mili, uh, jack arch ceilings mili, purana furniture store mein pada tha. We just took what we had and this is what it was and this is what we became. Now I'd like to point out here, hamare paas government ka budget tha, so there was no funds. So we had to do what we could do in whatever was allocated. What you see here, Nietzsche, the wooden flooring in the photograph later is a reused badminton court wooden flooring that was lying in the store which they had discarded. So we reused that. Next. This is all furniture in their store. Mein padha tha. Wo jo arch I showed the arch, which was closed, was closed. And so the space sort of became open. So space opened up. So here, what I'm trying to say is that government maybe if you use sensitive design, you can bring back the history, you can bring back the architecture, and you can make it relevant for today. So we've been able to put in new electrical, new uh, AC, everything. It's a modern director's office. Next. It has, but all the things that we could use, we opened up the fireplace, we put back these historic tiles, everything in the spirit of what uh, is the heritage of that place. Again trying to uh, keep within the budget of the PWD. Next. And it's been done by the in-house engineering team of IIT Rudki. These people uh, were trained, they, 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 did, they did work on the job. And I think uh, the lesson that I have from most of my projects is that the craftsmen know their job. If you tell them twice, the third time they get it on their own. And I think that's what we need to respect. It's not the architect who really knows what to do. It's the craftsman who really brings your, puts your idea to forth. Next. So the other project I want to talk about is again public spaces and people places and how design is actually a tool for problem solving. Now, conservation architects are not really uh, considered as people who know what to do. Bahut log bolte, conservation aale to bahut gyan dete, unko to kuch aata nahi hai, baate karte rehte, karte kuch nahi hai. So, <laughs> so I want to talk about Bandra Station, Mumbai Grade 1 Heritage Building. Uh, next. Bots are problems here, lots of traffic, lots of mixed uses. There's been a, a skywalk that has been built through the building. 
Now this project was done for uh, the Ministry of Railways, Western Railways and UNESCO and they asked us how can we solve this mess. Next. Now because it was a heritage building, that's why it came to me, otherwise they would have gone to some uh, great urban designer or uh, urban planner. So all I did was actually just sort the traffic, give, uh, give preference to the public transport and take care of the autos and uh, when I presented it to the Western Railways, they really liked it and now they're in dialogue with uh, the Municipal Corporation of Mumbai to uh, get things moving. Next. So the point I'm trying to uh, again say is that heritage has a very important role to play. It reinforces the image of the area and it's here Bandra station is very important because it's for the people. There are 350,000 people who go to the station every day. So we cannot not think about them. We cannot say that it's a grade one heritage structure, so it will be the same as when it was built in 1850. We have to put in new ticketing systems, we have to put in new surveillance, we have to put what we have to put in new So the really, the point of the conservation architect in any of these situations would be to make sure that it will go How do you make sure that you take what is special of the of past that, and make sure the needs of tomorrow are met? Because unless heritage remains relevant to the people, it will become a ruin. So our job really when we are working with urban heritage is to make sure that we have to take it into the future very, very sensitively. Next. So my new uh, experiment again has been how to make heritage accessible to all. Now these are my experiments with the digital world. I worked on two settlements near Calcutta. One is called Chinsura, which was an erstwhile Dutch town. And the second one is called Chandan Nagar, which was an erstwhile French town. Now, <laughs> the point was that this, this was a place with a colonial past. The people didn't know whether they should relate to the colonial past or they should relate to their nationalist past. Uh, particularly in the case of Chandran Nagar, uh, it had voted to uh, move out of the French Union much before the other settlements and became part of West Bengal. So there was a huge nationalist spirit there. So what about the heritage? Do we keep it? Do you demolish it? Do you forget about the fact that it was a colonial French town? Or, or is there something more to it? So these are questions that were coming up. I've been working on this project again for almost seven years. The first, uh, uh, the first project actually was initiated uh, by a French NGO saying that they wanted to do a listing of buildings of heritage value. And we came up with 99 buildings, but calls kept coming saying that buildings are getting demolished because there is no law to protect them. So, uh, next. Uh, in the year 2015, we did something, we realized that it, heritage was not about the buildings. It is about the people who lived then and it's about the people who live now. So in 2015, we did a digital engagement project wherein we uh, mobilized the uh, young students of history from the area to, uh, to join our project as citizens historians and collect local histories. Histories of you, me, my dadi, your dadi, your, what happened. A lot of people opened up their cupboards, uh, showed us old French newspapers, old French furniture that they had in their houses, old photographs, told us lots of stories. And next, and what we did is, um, we also did an uh, interaction with the kids. Do they know anything about the history? We did it in a fun way. We sort of designed a game so that people would come and play the game with us and tell us about the history, learn about their own town. Next. And so we did a, a, a set of workshops and competitions and we uh, developed, a, a, based on the art competition, there was a storybook that was generated which is, talks about the Dutch history of the town because this, uh, the ki kids had absolutely no idea of it. Next. And then we had a blog where people, where, where people were sharing these stories that we had collected. Next. And we also have an interactive website. Next where people could actually contribute their memories. So it's like a web home, it's like an online thing so that people anywhere in the world, whether they were from Chandanagar, migrated to America, went to France. So it's now like this web home where everybody can continue to, to populate history, stories, stories that belong to you and me. Next. And we have a historical timeline, which is again a database. Next. And this is uh, where we are crowdsourcing memories and histories and trying to pre prepare this memory bank. Next. And then of course social media. Without social media there is nothing today. So social media allows every single person to have an opinion, to put something, to blog about it, to share photos. And uh, I think it's, it's done pretty well. So I'm just going to wrap up now. Next. So my point is that 
Conservation is not about fossilizing a place in time. It's about mediating with the forces of change to create a sustainable built environment. And whatever we do, people have to be the center of it. And sometimes it doesn't take a lot of money, but a lot of initiative and intent to get things done. Thank you.